There's a reason Pete brings up Ohio. It's because now we turn our attention to that state and bring in J.D. Vance. He's the Senate candidate for the state of Ohio. Good morning, J.D. Good morning. Uh, glad to have you on the show this morning. Um, let's talk about what you believe is the top issue for your voters in the state of Ohio and what's going to make their decision on Tuesday. Yeah, there's a lot going on, of course, a lot of crises in the country. But the thing that I'm hearing most about is the cost of everything. So this terrible inflation crisis, uh, of course, the cost of gas, the cost of groceries, the cost of eggs. You know, uh, a year and a half ago, a dozen eggs were about a buck fifty in the state of Ohio. Now they're over four dollars uh, in a lot of places in the state of Ohio. Uh, so people are just very upset that they can't afford the basic things that they need to get through the day. And Ohio is also a big energy producing state. And so people understand instinctively that when you destroy American energy independence, you put a lot of Ohio workers out of the job, but you also raise the prices of everything else. And so they're looking at Joe Biden and my Democrat opponent, Tim Ryan, shutting down the Keystone XL pipeline and begging Saudi Arabia and Venezuela for oil and gas that we have right here at home. And they're saying, what, what gives here? Why are we doing this? Well, J.D., Joe Biden doubled down on that yesterday. Uh, it, it, so they haven't, I mean, Hillary Clinton talked about it in 2016. Here's Joe Biden yesterday, alongside that clip, talking about shutting down coal. Watch. It's also now cheaper to generate electricity from wind and solar than it is from coal and oil, literally cheaper. We're going to be shutting these plants down all across America and having wind and solar. I'm the only candidate which has a policy about how to bring economic opportunity using clean renewable energy as the key into coal country, because we're going to put a lot of coal miners and coal companies out of business. So, J.D., the closing argument for the top Democrat in the country four days out from the election is we're shutting down your coal plants. In the midst of an energy crisis yes. and as, as, as things are about to get a lot colder in the state of Ohio and other parts of the country, it's completely ridiculous, especially when we consider that China and India are opening up yes. coal-fired plants by, by the week. Why are we shutting this stuff down when we have plenty of it here? We can get it out of the ground with Ohio hands and Ohio workers, and yet you have the Biden administration attacking our energy independence. Here's what I think this is really about, guys. It's really about they, they don't like the people who do coal. They don't like the people who mine coal. They don't like the people who actually work in the energy sector. And so they've convinced themselves of this economic fantasy so that they can put a lot of hardworking Ohioans out of a job. The reason I want to go to the Senate is to prevent it from happening. And it's not just about the jobs, as important as that is. Because the energy crisis is a big part of the overall inflation crisis, if we're able to get back to energy independence, we're going to see groceries getting lower. We're going to see our farmers able to make ends meet. We're going to see the price of gas come down. It's all connected. Bad economic policy begets a lot of the misery that people are suffering. That's why we need to win big in four days and turn this country around. Yeah, I mean, people aren't stupid. I know they think we are. We played those clips from Joy Reid. They get that energy price, energy is up, and that's making everything else more expensive. It's not hard to figure out. You mentioned China and India, but Europe spent 500 billion euros on renewables, and now they're starting to mine again. They're actually tearing down their wind farms and, 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 and setting up mines. So, I mean, I don't understand why they can't figure that out. A lot of people are wondering, J.D., Okay, what can a Republican majority do? I want to play a clip from Art Laffer because he has some ideas of what people like you should do if and when you're elected um, as soon as you get into office. I want to get your thoughts on it on the other side. I would do the legislation to undo the energy policies of the president and his administration. I would also do one to undo the damage done by the tax, uh, by the uh, increase in the funding of the IRS and the 87,000 new there. I would go through program by program in a separate piece of legislation on each one and put that bill to undo the Build Back Better Baby bill uh, piece by piece by piece to make sure that all the Dems vote against it or for it or whatever they're going to do and then have make Biden veto every one of those bills. J.D., I like this piece by piece instead of these big giant bills that people can hide behind. Yeah, I, I think that's a great idea. And, and, and here's the thing here. What people don't realize is, yes, Joe Biden will still be president. But we will have a lot of leverage. I think the American people are about to give us a mandate because they're so unhappy with the direction of the country. When Republicans control the House and Republicans control the Senate, we need to act like it. We need to actually use the authority the American people have given us. 
If Joe Biden vetoes a couple of pieces of legislation, fine, let him do it. Let's at least have the debate about how to get back to energy independence, about how to draw down this terrible inflation crisis. Uh, you, you mentioned Europe. It's a national security issue, too, when you beg every tin pot dictator in the world for energy that we have here in Ohio, you make America weaker on the world stage, too. So across a whole host of issues, I think Republicans need to act like we have the majority because we're about to get it and the American people aren't giving it to us to warm seats. Yeah. Well, J.D., energy independence, inflation, crime, these are the issues that you're hearing from your constituents, potential constituents that we're hearing from people that we talk to when we go out and do diners and talk to voters across the country. Democrats, though, think there's a different message. There's a different priority for voters. They think this election is about a threat to democracy. Watch this. Make no mistake, democracy is in the ballot for all of us. Democracy is on the ballot. Democracy is on the ballot. Think about this. Democracy is on the ballot. Democracy is actually on the ballot. Democracy is on the ballot. Democracy is on the ballot. And democracy is on right. the ballot. Do you believe that democracy is on the ballot in Utah? It is on the ballot. Democracy is on the ballot this year in America. Somebody's got to tell voters what they need to hear, which is that democracy is on the ballot. Well, the talking point went out, and that was actually the benign version of reiterating the talking point. There was others we played this morning, J.D., a historian, a historian at MSNBC that said soon our children will be arrested and possibly killed. Yes. So can you translate? H how exactly is democracy on the ballot? Well, first of all, we need to find whatever all those people are smoking and make it a class one controlled substance in this country because <laughs> that is some scary, scary stuff. But 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 look, th th this is a joke. Uh, democracy is under threat, according to Joe Biden and everybody else, when the American people are unhappy and vote the way that they want to to make the country better. That's not democracy being under threat. That's actually the realization of democracy. When you screw up, you get a chance to govern and you mess it up. The American people penalize you. That that's a good thing, according to our system, not a bad thing. And, and here here's here's the game that they're trying to play. They know that their policies have been a failure. They have no agenda to run on, so they're running on this distraction, which is really, if you think about it, it's a criticism of the American people. How dare you yeah. vote for a better life for yourself and your children? I don't think it's going to work, and nor should it. Like Enos Cantor, I think I'm going to change my name to democracy and run for something. <laughs> I'd be on everyone's That's ballot. Uh, not a bad idea. Okay, so Fox News releases power rankings, J.D., and your race uh, is against Tim Ryan is a lean Republican. So should things go the way we think they will, voters turn out and vote for you. What is the first thing you would do following a victory? What are you, what's your focus? Yeah, so we talked about the energy crisis, which affects Ohio in, in particular, but, but I've also got to talk about the border crisis here, and, and we have to get control of the southern border. You know, Ohio is the third state when it comes to fentanyl overdose deaths in our country. We know that the cartels are bringing this fentanyl into our country through that wide-open southern border. Joe Biden and Tim Ryan have encouraged that wide-open border activity, and we've got to shut it down. I really think that we have to, as a country, go to war against those cartels shut down the border, or we're not going to have a country anymore. I mean, we're losing over 100,000 of our citizens, a lot of them healthy young people. If we don't get control over that issue, over that crazy border, we are going to live with the consequences for decades to really, come. Really quickly, J.D., how do you do that? Even if Republicans gain control of the Senate and the House, Joe Biden remains president of the United States. How do you then, as a senator, granted in the majority, but with an executive that is a Democrat, change what's happening at the border? I think we use our leverage. We tell Joe Biden that he doesn't get another dime for his priorities unless he does his job at the southern right. border. We have to be willing to take a stand on this. Yeah, you know, J.D., when you talked about oil, you said this is a national security problem. The border is, too, and not just for some of the obvious reasons of, you know, we've had suspected terrorists coming over. We are actually turning, because we're empowering the cartels, um, Mexico into a narco state. Um, the cartels have more power than ever, and it's influencing um, the, the Mexican government. I think it is a, a, a big issue. But you have young children. And all of us have children on this couch. And I think the education situation and the way education money has been weaponized um, to indoctrinate our children on some really weird things is also a big sleeper issue. Uh, it's a huge sleeper issue. I'm one of these crazy people who thinks that our, our, our schools should make our kids smarter, uh, yes. not brainwash them. 
And unfortunately, a lot of American schools are going in the wrong direction. I think there are a lot of mama and papa bears out there who are very angry about this. And I agree, they're going to come out to vote. But we've got to do that. November the 8th, guys, JDVance.com. All right, uh, J.D., real quick follow-up on what Will asked about. Is the debt ceiling and raising it maybe one of those points where you have a stare down with, with Biden on things like the border? Look, I, I think when we have a debt ceiling negotiation, we really do have to have a conversation about what our priorities are and what the government is using, those tax dollars that we keep on funding mm. via a debt ceiling increase. But I also think it's the nature of having a majority. It's just that we have an additional leverage point to use over the Biden administration because they have to negotiate with us to get what they want. And, and it's, it's, it's basic negotiation. We just need to not roll over every time they need something. We actually have an ability to get something that our voters sent us to Washington to do. Yeah. Does that mean All you right. need a new, a, a new leader in the Senate as well once you get the majority? Well, let's see what actually happens, of course. Um, you know, what we really need to do is kick Chuck Schumer out of the majority leadership. And we'll see what happens on the Republican side. But I'm very confident we're going to have some solid Republican senators ready to do the things the American people need us to do. All right. J.D. Vance, great to talk to you this morning. Good luck on Tuesday in Ohio. Thanks, J.D. Thank, Thank you, you guys. JD. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.